This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform to build your business online. Space, the final frontier. This is the voyage of how I reached 300,000 subscribers on YouTube, created a contest and invited everyone to join with their doll design to boldly go where no doll has gone before. Hey guys, what's up? Today I will finally reveal who won the 300k contest and will receive their winning design as a prize. I never thought I would reach 300,000 subscribers in 2022, so the video is a little bit delayed, but here it finally is. So how about we start picking a winner? Let's go. <laughs> I was seriously overwhelmed by how many people have entered the contest. Almost 250 of you guys took their time to draw their artwork and even come up with lore and stories. You all are so creative and choosing a winner was literally the hardest decision ever. If you want to see all the entries, go to the timestamps shown on the video on screen now. It's seriously worth seeing them all. After carefully choosing, I was able to narrow down my selection to these top five. I think that these five were truly beautiful and unique in their approaches and also resembled a challenge for me to make them. But one design truly stood out to me. And the winner is... Mopey Po! I honestly fell in love with this design the moment I saw it and couldn't stop thinking about it. Their design resembles working alien people that are descendants from an ancient fish species who travel space for materials and food. They have an octopus companion that fuels their tank with breathable air and energy and is generating this energy directly from space. I was so intrigued by the unique color palette and design and I also had to really think about how to translate this design so I could make it reality. Also, it didn't particularly look like a design that I would have made on my own, especially regarding the colors. So it really let me overstep my comfort zone and made me choose this as a winner. So how about we are getting started by printing the doll? Okay, so I mixed some light gray resin already and yeah, let's print the doll. I managed to get it on one bed, let's hope everything prints. <gasps> With the resin soup mixed and the printer ready to get going, I started the printing process. The parts sadly did not all print at once, but I managed to get everything printed eventually and cured all the parts in my mercury curing station. I then put them into my doll bowl. If you are curious which doll model I used for this doll, it is the My Melody doll that my dear friend Blue Pixie sculpted last year for the Sanrio video series. I put some magnets into the doll head already, but will have to drill some channels into the hands for the wires. I'm using my small 1mm hand drill and carefully drill through the wrists. That sounds wrong out of context. <laughs> Once the channels look like this, I can then use a clippy descendant again and cut it to the right length while shooting the rest of it into oblivion. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm in space. Squarespace. Squarespace? What does it have to do with space, you ask? Did you know that NASA made their website with Squarespace? Well, that's not true, but you could make a space-related website with Squarespace. Clean and professional portfolio art gallery designs will let you create a beautiful website. And you can even make password-protected areas for very special VIP. Never accidentally blow up pictures thanks to image block. Images will automatically be sized to make sure they look always great within your content, no matter how you place them. Just drag and drop the images into position. And you can even connect your social media accounts by just changing the links and icons. So if you are tired of alienating user interfaces, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using my code moonlightjewel. That's squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel code moonlightjewel. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and now let's get right back into space. Once the wire was cut to the correct size, I can then simply use some super glue and glue it into place. One drop on each side is enough. I do that with both hands and with that the doll is ready to be assembled. I think the face and proportions of the doll perfectly work for this project and I'm happy Blue Pixie was okay with me using this doll for the project. On to the stringing. For the arms, I will take this folded rubber band with a length of about one gaming mouse, insert it into both armholes and then string the arms one by one. I secure the ends with sticks and then just took the hands to finish them off. They work perfectly, so I can now continue to string the rest of the body. 
Take a long rubber band with the length of a cereal box and split it at the leg holes, threading it into both legs and hook on the feet in the very end. Perfect! With this last step the doll is strung, so let's show her before the customizing process. This doll is about as tall as a hot dog and with that she is smaller than the last few dolls I made, but I feel the smaller size fits this project perfectly and I also was able to print her a bit faster this way. I'm really excited to start working on her, so let's start with the easier parts first. The clothes! For her shirt I first designed and vectorized a print that looked like this in my vector program. With it being ready to cut, I can then load it into the cutting software and cut it from shiny golden vinyl on my dad's professional plotter. After it was cut, I can then start weeding out all the shapes from the golden vinyl. I really love how you can only see the shininess once the vinyl is removed from the transfer film. Wow! This is how it looked when I was done. I'm happy the super thin lines and small stars were cut so nicely. Yay! Before we can iron it onto the fabric, we will need to cut it out from the fabric, right? I'm using a thin blue cotton fabric and cut out everything from it first. To give it more depth, I decided to airbrush the fabric with a dark blue to create a nice gradient. I already gave my fingers the perfect gradient, so I tried it on the fabric, which was not that easy because it kept flying around, but I somehow managed it in the end and it looks really, really nice. Maybe I should have put the fabric on some tape. Well, next time. <laughs> I really love the result though, and it's really good to know that you can airbrush fabrics like this if they don't have to be washed or so. With the pattern pieces airbrushed, I can finally iron the print onto them. I place them under the iron press and then iron them on at about 155 degrees Celsius for about 15 seconds. I let the pieces cool down before carefully peeling off the transfer film. Wow, this looks really good. The gradient makes the golden print pop even more. With all the pieces prepared, we can now finally assemble the shirt. I also made two little golden cuffs, but will now first glue around the upper seam allowance of the collar and pull in a gathering thread along the bottom seam allowances of the sleeves. After doing so, I then take the golden cuffs, fold them in half like this and place them along the bottom seams of the sleeves, finished sides in and sew them on. Afterwards they look like this and I will put them aside for now. And first sew on the collar on the bodice finished sides in. And then I can take my sleeves again and attach them onto the armholes good sides in. Ah, you gotta love video transitions! <laughs> Only thing left now is to close the sleeves and side seams good sides in and hem the bottom seam allowance with some seam tape. With a velcro on the back we have a beautiful starry shirt and I'm really happy how it turned out. I'm usually not the biggest fan of dark blue but in this combination it is just beautiful. Let's make her some pants. Okay, I cut out the pants, straight check them and now I put the little white on top and then I will put the gills on top and yeah, let's see if that turns out nice. I first iron on the white print at around 165 degrees Celsius for about 20 seconds. Then peel off the transfer film and end up with this. Then I just place the gill print that I made and cut from blue vinyl and iron it on top of the other print. Now I just have to peel it off after ironing and the pieces are prepared for sewing. To sew the pants I will first hem together both front pieces along the middle seam finished sides in. A good tip while sewing is, by the way, to always keep your iron nearby to steam those seam allowances nice and flat. Gotta make those allowances flattering. Sorry. <laughs> With the front of the pants done, I now take the back pieces for the pants and sew them on along the side seams of the pants nice sides in. Afterwards, I'm going to be gathering the bottom seam allowances of the pants and prepare two straps for the cuffs like this. Then, in the same way as I did with the cuffs on the shirt, I will sew on the folded cuffs good sides in onto the pants. Then I take the waistband and pin it to the center front of the pants and sew it on all the way along the waistline. I ironed everything nice and flat and also cleaned up the top seam of the waistband because somehow I forgot that before. <laughs> and then it is finally time to close the back seam of the pants like this. Afterwards, I just have to fold the pants like this and sew the legs and crotch seam from one leg to the other. Since these pants have a low crotch, I need to sew a sharp edge. The way I do that is by sewing until the turning point, then lift the foot of the machine, turn the piece and then keep on sewing. Easy, right? Before adding a closure, I decided that the pants needed some aging. 
I think an alien working on a spacecraft gathering materials and food would never have a squeaky clean and brand new spacesuit, so I took my dark grey pastels and added some dirt and age to the pants. It also really gives the simple design such dimension. I mainly work it into the seams and wrinkles. With a final closure added, the pants are done and I love how realistic they look. And yeah, these were already all the regular clothing pieces for this doll. Now let's try to make the spacesuit elements. How about we start with a helmet? To make it, I first print the fish helmet in translucent blue resin. Lupixi did an amazing job sculpting it again and literally made the whole thing look exactly like on the artwork. I also printed a little tube and some shoe bases we need later. Now I just need to scrape off the pieces of the print plate and then throw them into hot water. I do that because removing the supports with hot water reduces the chances of scarring on the pieces. It just printed like a charm, so now I simply have to wash and cure all the pieces in my curing station before we can work on it. So this will be the fish helmet of the doll. It however needs a clear front and for that I will be using this acrylic half sphere. I marked already how much I need to cut out from the sphere for the neck and first snip off the hanger. And I think the rest I'm gonna do with a Dremel now. <sighs> With a Dremel I was able to make a nice round cutout on the sphere without breaking it. I will also need this tube later on that is just an aquarium tube and connects to the helmet and neck piece. Time to paint the helmet! I masked off all the fins because I want them to stay blue and will use my semi-matte white spray paint to give the helmet a nice white coating. I do that in the workshop of my dad so I won't make my studio stinky. Stinky! With the helmet nicely dried I can now peel off the masking tape. This is always so satisfying. It turned out so nice too. To paint the golden parts, I use my liquid gold paint and carefully paint all the golden lines on the fins and the front of the helmet golden. To add some aging to the helmet as well, I use a dark brown pearly acrylic paint and dry brush some of it onto the golden brim and distribute it a little with my fingers. It is subtle but makes a real difference in my opinion. To add some more color, I used some blue acrylic paint and added along the eyes of the fish helmet. And then using some ivory cream color, I paint the eyes and also add a big sparkle element with the same color to the helmet of Cam. This looks so nice! Now it's finally time to gloss the fins with UV nail polish to make them transparent. I simply apply the gloss all the way around the fins and cure them in between for a couple minutes under my UV lamp. With all of the fins glossed, I then just add some stardust to the helmet by applying this unicorn iridescent powder all over the helmet and fixating it with some glittery hairspray. To close off the tube, I apply some caulking silicone to the end and let that cure for a day. To make the helmet connect to the spacesuit, I will need a neck piece. I made a pattern for it already and now cut it from some EVA foam. This foam is usually used for cosplays, but I thought maybe these cosplay techniques might work in doll scale as well, so how about we try? <laughs> Using some contact glue, I first apply it to all the edges of the foam pieces that need to be glued together. I spread those toxic boogers with a scrap foam piece and then let them rest a moment. When the glue has dried without being tacky anymore, it was my sign to glue the pieces together, trying to make my markings align as good as possible. I carefully press them together and bend them in shape until all the pieces of the neck piece have been assembled. We will be extra fancy this time and add a magnetic closure to the back, so I add an extra stipe to the back of the neck piece that is just wide enough for the little magnets. To insert them, I just cut a little hole into the stripe, push the magnets through and fixate it with some super glue. When all magnets were inserted, it looks like this and it works like a charm. I'm surprised how well it works actually. To mask off all the seam lines and magnets, I then use some foam clay and attach it to the neck piece, spreading it as good as I can and trying to make it nice and smooth. I let everything dry and then made these half dowels from foam to finish off the edges of the neck piece. I carefully slapped them onto the top and bottom of the neck piece and tried to make it as neat as I can. When both edges were applied, it already looks so, so good. After blending everything in with some more foam clay and letting it dry, I plasti dipped the whole thing around four times and can now spray paint it with white spray paint. 
plastic dipping is essential because otherwise you won't have a smooth surface when painting the foam. When the neck piece was dry, it looked really nice so I could continue to paint the upper and lower edges golden with my liquid golden paint. I also added a bit of aging to the gold and then made some vinyl cut designs in golden vinyl to finish off the designs of the neck piece. I first carefully apply the little star to the front and the neck piece and then add all the other small elements to it. And with some glitter added to the tube and helmet, the neck piece is done. I'm so happy that the cosplaying technique worked with the foam here. This way the neck piece is elastic and removable, which is just awesome. I will later also show how I added the glitter to the tube. Just wait! <laughs> Let's make the fuel tank and belt with the octopus next. I used the tube I printed earlier for that and first need to drill in some holes for the tubes later. With the Dremel this was luckily a very easy task to do. Then using some EVA foam again, I will cut out this rectangle shape with a little window. For cutting EVA foam it's best to use a sharp crafting knife because you want to make sure that you have no jagged edges and such. With some more pieces I also cut from EVA foam we can now start working on the fuel tank. First we need a transparent window on the tank, so I will use the UV nail polish method again to make the window shiny and transparent. After doing so I apply the trusty Kraftkleber all over the inside of the big foam piece and on the tube, however leaving out the window. When the time of the glue had come I then carefully glue the big foam piece to the tube, pressing it on firmly and pulling it in shape if necessary. When I was satisfied with the result, I then take the stripes I cut from foam and apply them to the edges of the tube, making them thicker. I don't know, I just thought it would look nice and tanky. <laughs> I gotta say, working with foam might become one of my new favorite things. It is such a nice material to work with and it is super lightweight, so yeah, I definitely recommend trying it out. When both stripes were glued, I just need to finish off the foam part by gluing on these circle rings to cover up the seams on the side of the tube. I then use some foam clay again and seal off all the edges of the tank. And to make the tubes go in the tank later on, I cut some holes into the foam so that I can push in the tubes like this. When the clay had dried, I then sand it smooth with some sanding paper before masking off the window since I will need to plasti dip the whole thing in order to paint it later. To do that, I stuffed it with some paper towels and put it on a little stick so I could hold it well while spraying. I ended up sanding it even a bit more before plastic dipping it a couple more times and now it is finally time to paint the whole thing. I use a nice cool grey acrylic paint and coat the whole tank in that color. After it has dried I can then also remove the masking tape from the window before adding some aging with a dark brown metallic paint and my fantastic dry brush and dabbing finger technique. It was so much fun to add the metallic dirt and I really love the look of the tank so far. Now for the tubes. I got some blue wire in order to be able to tame the shape of the tubes a little and cut them into the right length. They will be inserted into the tubes later on, but first I need to fill them with dark blue glitter. To do that I made a tiny paper funnel and will carefully sprinkle the glitter into the funnel which connects to the tube. I closed off one end of the tube already and now carefully push in the wire. Make sure to not fill too much glitter into the tube before adding the wire, otherwise it can be a little difficult to get in the wire. To test the whole thing I temporarily masked off the other end of the tube and it works perfectly. Now the only thing left is to seal off the ends of the tube with two beads like this that I glued onto a needle that I then inserted into the tube with a bunch of contact glue. And to make the edge nicer I finish it off with some self-adhesive golden vinyl strap. Since the tank will connect to a belt with a harness, let's make the belt. I also made this one from foam and will need to add some foam stripes to it first. I already marked where I want the stripes to be and then simply attach them to the belt with contact glue. I also added a magnetic closure again and now plasti dip the whole thing so I can then use my airbrush to spray it in a nice light teal coating. I needed a couple of layers but the color turned out so so beautiful. I then use a small brush and some blue acrylic paint to paint the long button on the belt blue before adding some decorations. I simply painted some half beads that I had blue for the buttons and let some editing magic happen to glue them onto the belt. Now just the little blue shell is missing. I luckily had some shell shaped beads that I could use for that so I simply painted one blue and super glued it onto the belt. And to make the belt fit the rest of the outfit it definitely needs some aging too. 
Since I used this metallic paint again, the whole belt almost looks like it's copper covered with a patina and I really love that effect. For the harness, I actually airbrushed some pleather teal as well, for the lack of teal colored pleather that I didn't have, and will now use these tiny snap buckets to make a detachable fuel tank. I really like the idea and feel this would be so practical in reality. With the buckles attached to the straps, I then carefully glue them onto the tank first. To cover the backside, I use a horizontal stripe and also cover the overlapping parts with smaller straps. And then the only thing left is to attach the straps to the belt using some contact glue again. And now it's just a little octopus missing, right? I actually decided to print one of these fidget octopus toys in resin after one of my patrons on Discord was so kind to try it out for me first. I scaled it down to 56% and printed it and it's so adorable, right? Now I simply need to paint it dark blue with my airbrush. Let's do that with a transition. Then I just need to add color to the eyes and add some golden spots to the octopus and with this final piece the fuel tank and belt combination is done and I just love it. I ended up attaching a horizontal stripe and some aging to the harness as well and attached the octopus with some blue tech. So he's completely removable which I really really like. On to the shoes. To make these cool space boots I first created a cardboard sole and attached them to the feet like this. Then, using the good old foam clay again, I created a little toe box. I try not to make it too big and even it out as good as I can. It doesn't need to be 100% perfect, but just close enough. I let these dry overnight and end up with these two slippers. I already created a pattern for the boot and cut it from EVA foam. To bend it in shape, I wrap it around the foot and use my heat gun and a heat protection glove that did not heat protect at all to shape the foam. After shaping it, it looks a bit more three-dimensional and I can then glue together the front part until the marking. To shape these fin-shaped wing thingies for the shoes, I heat them up with my heat gun and then press them around the leg. EVA foam is amazing when you heat it. You can bend it into pretty much every kind of shape. With the fins and the shoe shape ready, I then proceed and glue them into each other. This was a bit finicky because the contact glue immediately sticks, but I kind of made it work by going slow. And now the time has finally come to glue the sho show. <laughs> I wrote show. <laughs> ah. uh, I spread some glue on the edge of the foam and on the sole and then just stick the pieces together. With the feet wrapped in cling film again and the shoes on the feet, I now need to fill up the gaps and do that again with foam clay. It took a while until I was able to apply the foam smoothly and I ended up doing two layers to make it really smooth and let everything dry for 24 hours. After waiting what felt like an eternity since everything you wait for feels longer than it is, I can then spread some glue onto the shoe soles and the soles <laughs> and then bond the shoe and the sole together forever. Before plasti dipping, I mask off the shoe sole because we only need plasti dip on the foam. After eternally waiting until the shoe had four layers of plasti dip, letting each layer dry in between, I can then airbrush the soles in the same teal shade as the belt. And then I can satisfyingly remove the masking tape. I was happy it came off this nice actually. <laughs> no, now I can finally use my gold paint to paint the shoe sole golden. Why did I write the sentence? <laughs> and before adding some aging, I take this golden thread and will glue it along the gap from shoe and sole to seal it off nicely. I used my PVA glue for that and it worked out very great. And last but not least, there is just some aging missing and I paint it the same way as I did on the belt and tank before until I end up with something like this. And with a grey stripe added to the boots, they are done and I feel they look so, so nice. They almost feel as if they have been sculpted from one piece. And that is exactly the look I wanted to achieve. I'm honestly really proud of these. <laughs> oh, and I also made some blue socks from some blue tights for her. Nothing crazy. <laughs> okay, let's finally work on the doll itself and make her wig first. I prepared dark grey, light orange and teal colored yarn with. I made the wig cap from some jersey fabric of cam already and start gluing the ponytail wig by adding wefts to the back of the head first. I will simply glue the lower hairline double so that there won't be any wig cap showing when putting the hairs into a ponytail later. 
Gluing wigs is usually very relaxing to me. The styling, however, is something I'm really not that good at because I'm already incapable of cutting and styling my own hair. How am I supposed to do it at such a small scale? After gluing the bottom hairline, I then add hair to the top that will go into the ponytail later on as well. Now I have to put this in a ponytail. I'll do that off cam because of the angle. I can't really film that. <laughs> With the initial ponytail in place and hairs out of the way, I can then proceed and start gluing the bangs. I add the orange strand first, because I know otherwise I would simply forget it, and then fill up the whole front section with grey, teal and orange wefts. And then the dreading cutting and styling is happening. Ugh. I slowly cut the bangs shorter and shorter and feather them out if necessary with an eyebrow shaver. I then glue some wefts that will be folded towards the front and then take my final wefts to glue them around the ponytail to make it fuller. Unfortunately my cam did not have the best angle and a lot of it is out of focus, but I think you get the idea. And for the final touch I add this golden stripe. I simply put some self-adhesive vinyl onto some clear soft vinyl and simply glue it together on the back. And with some small polymer clay elements I made when I thought my cam was recording when in fact it didn't, <laughs> the wig is done. I really love the way it looks and I also added some sparkly hairspray just because I felt extra. <laughs> Okay, the final part has finally come, the face. Before we can start painting it, I first need to add the little cheek elements to it, so I use some Sculpey clay and carefully sculpt them onto the face. I tested out baking resin in the oven with polymer clay before and it does actually work, which is great. When all elements were sculpted, it looks like this and I can now throw it into the oven for about 15 minutes. Let's bake this. And after baking and spraying the face with MSC, I can finally start the face up. First, as always, I will add some glistening micro glitters to the face before adding some soft blushing to the cheeks with pesto chalk dust. This time I won't be using pink for the blush, but dark grey instead. It was fun using different colors than usual, but also a bit challenging. With a smaller brush, I also brush the lips dark grey and then can go in with some pencils to sketch out the eye lines. I will be filling them in with a lighter color, but it was good to sketch them out darker so I could really see how the lines look like. I also add the lower lash line and lashes. Before filling in the eye lines, I decided to paint the little cheek elements teal and then use the same color to fill in the eye lines on the doll. This was so fun because I have never painted these lines in a light color like teal before. Before painting the eyebrows, I also decided to sketch them out first to make sure they were on an even level and have a similar shape. They're never twins but sisters anyways, but we want to make sure they at least look like sisters. <laughs> And after painting everything teal, I then used my golden paint for some highlights on the face. This was so much fun and gold and teal is just one of the most gorgeous color combinations. Wow! I also add a line underneath the eyebrow and a line for a golden eyeshadow and it really makes the face pop. Let's give her some freckles. I really liked the freckles on the original artwork, so I definitely had to give her some freckles as well. I used dark grey and teal for them to give them a bit of a variety. It kind of just made sense to me. <laughs> and now she needs some stardust. I used the iridescent micro glitter again and it just makes everything look even better. After a final spray of MSC, I then add my favorite Liquitex high gloss varnish to the lips and also lower lash line and inner corners of the eyes. And with that, the face up is done and now it's just the eyes missing. To make them, I made and printed the design for the iris onto some shiny cardboard and first dab on some of the iridescent micro glitter onto the iris as well. Then adding some UV resin to the half seal mold first, I then take the iris and place it onto the top of the resin upside down and cure it for about a minute. I mix some dark grey resin for the sclera and then add that on top of the cured eye. Any bubbles can be removed with a lighter. The whole thing needs to cure for another 3-4 to four minutes and then we can demold. Oh wow, this looks so cute. I really really like it and it comes very close to the original artwork I think. I then just made a second eye the same way and then let magic happen to insert the eyes into the head. Okay, wow, I'm completely blown away. The colors and everything work so well together. And I guess with that we have all the parts and we are done. Let me present to you the winner's design coming to life.
And here is the winner's doll design. Before you click off the video, make sure to stay until the credit roll with all the contestants' entries. It's really worth seeing them. Thank you guys so much for the incredible support. Without you, I could have never hosted this contest. And also, in case I forgot anyone in the credit roll, please forgive me, it was a lot of entries. <laughs> Thank you also again to all of my patrons and channel subscribers. You guys are true chats. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. And now let's open the curtain for the credit roll. Bye. <laughs>